Hello guys and welcome to Tab's Classic Bedtime Stories. I'm your host, Tabby, and today we will be reading Old Witch and the Polka Dot Ripping by Wendy and Harry Devlin. Let's begin. Howling winds sent branches scraping against the windows and shutters of the old jug and muffin tea room. Rain splashed and sudden lightning made wild shadows on the flapping shingles. It was a terrible morning. What a beautiful morning, said Old Witch, who watched the storm from her quilt-covered bed. With a leap, she was out of her quilts and into her high-buttoned shoes. A quick look in the mirror told her that her hair was a fright, so she grabbed her pointed old hat and jammed it down on her head. She made a face in the mirror and slid down the banister to the kitchen. With a great deal of noise, she crashed into the kitchen door. Bats! she said. In the kitchen, very busy with stirring and pouring, were Nicky and his mother, who owned the tea room. Old Witch had lived in the attic ever since that day they had awakened her from a long sleep in the chimney. When she felt like it, Old Witch helped with the cooking. What's cooking? said Old Witch, glaring at all the activity. Nikki's mother carefully explained about the contest. Old Witch needed a new bandstand, and the townspeople agreed that a carnival with a cake baking contest would be a fine way to raise money. A new bandstand? Old Witch screeched. What's wrong with the old one? It's got everything spiders, mice, cobwebs, and bats. Nikki thought the best way to answer Old Witch was to invite her to the carnival. You'll have a wonderful time, he said, and if you like, you may enter the contest. But Mrs. Butterbean always wins the first prize at every cake contest. Old Witch answer was a snort as she perched herself high on a shelf to tease the cooks. She cackled as she told Nicky that she was going to sprinkle sand on his sugar cookies. Nikki's mother finally lost her patience as Old Witch knocked the can of pepper into her lemon icing. Between sneezes, she ordered the old troublemaker out of the kitchen. A wart pox on both of you! On carnivals, on bandstands, on lemon cakes! She stopped long enough to make a face which was rather frightening on top of her own face. Then grabbing her broom, she sailed out of the house to the top of the black walnut tree to sulk and mutter little rhymes like this. Toil and trouble for old witch. I hope they all get wild oak itch. She banged a black walnut with her fist. Her eyes suddenly lit up. A big green moon, a toad's blue eyes. I'll make nut cake and win first prize. Old Witch stayed up in the tree until Nikki and his mother left for the carnival. Back in the kitchen, she tied on a great flowered apron. Pans rattled, flour flew. A trip to the cellar brought long forgotten spices to mingle with pumpkin and sugar. In no time, the cake was frosted, covered with a checkered napkin, and packed in a basket. Basket, broom, and Old Witch were soon on the way to Old Wick. There in the village square, flags were flying over striped tents, and all around was a wonderful holiday spirit. Old Witch made her way through the crowds to the main tent. Sometimes her nose barely reached the tabletops, and once she almost had it caught in the cider press at the apple exhibit. Now, at last, Old Witch entered her cake in the contest and stopped to look about. Would the judges dare to choose someone else's cake? She hopped up on the display table to get a better look. Her hat accidentally fell into a large white whipped cream cake, but she smoothed it over nicely with her broom. She tasted the strawberry cake, now the banana, and finally she dipped into a chocolate square. Tasty. She squawked, very tasty. 
She scurried out to a table by the entrance. She peeked out from under a tablecloth and saw the elegant Mrs. Butterbean coming down the path. While her chauffeur carried a tall coconut cake, Mrs. Butterbean carried her nose high in the air. Hush now, she whispered loudly. No one must know that a famous baker makes these for me. By hook or by crook, the Butterbeans always win. Old Witch became very angry when she heard this. Bats, crickets, and snake knees. She cracked her knuckles and popped her eyes. Imagine anyone cheating other than herself, of course. Mrs. Butterbean put the cake on the table just above Old Witch's head and turned to say goodbye. Carefully, Old Witch crept out and removed her hat. She slid the coconut cake onto her head, jammed on her hat, and coasted off on her broomstick high above the tent tops. As she circled overhead, she was somewhat pleased to hear angry voices and cries of outrage. The sun sank like a pink ball in a lavender sky, and Mrs. Butterbean still searched wildly behind bushes, under tents, and among small boys. Sometimes there seemed to be a faint cackling in the wind, and a light rain of something that looked like coconuts as night came over the carnival. A bit later, Nicky and his mother arrived home. Old Witch sat rocking by the fireplace. She turned her back on them and pretended to have no interest in who might have won the baking contest. Old Witch, dear, said Nicky's mother. Nicky won in the children's contest, but the most shocking thing happened. They think a cow got loose in the cake tent, and Mrs. Butterbean's cake completely disappeared. Mrs. Butterbean's cake disappeared, said Old Witch, looking at the ceiling. There was a strong wind today. She rose and glared at them. What about my magic nut cake? You won a ribbon for the most original, Nikki's mother laughed. The judges thought it had a haunting flavor, Nikki added, and pinned a polka dot ribbon on her cape. Old witch, what are all those crumbs on your cape? Nikki asked. Just a little dust from dancing, she muttered. Dodging away, Old Witch made her way noisily up the attic stairs, clacking her wooden heels at each landing. She leaned over the railing. And no blasted dinner for me tonight. I'm feeling delicate. For goodness sakes, Nikki's mother brushed up the floor of her fireside broom. I smell coconut, Nikki. Do you think Old Witch could have? Nikki sniffed. Our Old Witch? He said, looking at the attic. Of course not. <laughs> and upstairs, Old Witch crept under her quilt. Jumping Jehoshaphat. I had no idea how much trouble it was to enter a cake baking contest or how filling. She winked at her polka dot ribbon and cackled goodnight to the black crow on her windowsill. Then putting her hat over her face, she fell into a deep, sweet sleep. <laughs> and that is it. At the back of the book, like always, there is Old Witch's Magic Nut Cake. I will be putting that recipe in the description box below. I hope y'all enjoyed this because I know I surely did. And please come back again to Tab's Classic Bedtime Stories. Okay. Good night.